if you get on to, to just finally before we go on to the exercise, if you get on to timing your code, I mean, the problem with MPI is writing a code that works is difficult. Once it works, you ought to really check that it goes fast. So you want to time your programs. The nice thing in MPI is there's a function called MPI W time. This is one of the few MPI functions that doesn't return an integer. It returns a double precision number, which is a clock. It's measured in seconds. So if you want to measure a time, you do T start equals MPI W time. Do something. T stop equals MPI W time. Time equals T stop minus T start. And uh, just a hint here. Anything under a second is a meaningless time. Okay. You can't time anything less than a second. So you can't time the calculation of pi. It'll take milliseconds. If you want to time your program, you have to compute pi a billion times or something, okay? If the times you're printing out are less than a second, they are meaningless. They're dominated by noise and just garbage, okay? If you if you, times less than a second are meaningless. You need to you just need to, to so if people say, Oh, I timed one loop and it was 0 0.37 milliseconds, it's like okay. next time it was 73 million. That just you know. You have to time chunky amounts of time. It has to be of order seconds for it to be meaningful. So that will mean repeating the loop lots of times. Get it working first. If you want to time it, do it a million times or a billion times. That, that otherwise, it, it just doesn't make sense. 